On today's episode of the People Stack Podcast, I am going to talk about the paradox of action and the nuance of action. So many gurus, self-help coaches talk about, take action, just do it. Come on, get off your ass and get it done. Take the action. And at the People Stack, we take a much more nuanced approach to it because it's not always quite that simple as just get it done, just do it. We get it. We know. So I'm going to talk about why it's not that simple, what I mean by the paradox, the nuance of action taking, and how you can apply these principles so that you can set up the inspired intelligent actions and take the inspired intelligent actions that you know that you get to take to create your dream career and your dream life. Stay tuned. folks, Jen Bunk here. I am a career coach for technical leaders and co-CEO of The People Stack along with my loving husband, Rob Allen. And no, this is not, for those of you watching on video, this is not a commercial for AG1. We're really cooking on this show. It's also not a commercial for Lego. This is just the stuff that's in our living room. <laughs> so, oh man. Fun stuff, fun stuff. So we like to keep it real here. We like to keep it real. Like, I'm, yes, this is really me. I'm standing in my living room and this is my life. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping to make it more relatable here. So let's talk about action taking. And I want to be clear from the start, I'm obviously not against action taking. I want you to take Inspired action, intelligent action, action that is aligned with your goals, with your mission, with your vision, action that feels fun and flowy and free and fulfilling and stretching the boundaries of your comfort zone just enough so that you can create more. We want that kind of action for you. And it would be, it would be disingenuous if I said, you know, just do it. You know, just get off your ass and get a new job already. Get off your ass and ask your boss for a raise. You know, just, just do it. Claim your power, have the conversation, and make it happen. Like, that would be 100% completely disingenuous. Because uh, it's not that simple. And as some of you may have experienced or may be worried about, doing it that way can actually totally, totally screw things up for you and for those around you. And obviously that's not what we want. We want the action to come from a place of, yeah, this is correct, this is right, this is awesome. And that's not always straightforward. It can be complex. It can be complex, but what I wanna do, as we often do at the People Stack, is distill this down in a way that your brain can say, oh, that's what action taking is all about. That actually makes perfect sense. And I've experienced that before. So we're going to get a little bit theoretical, but we're also going to be very practical. I promise you that. My hope for you, my intention for this is that by the end of this podcast, you will have some clear actions, or at least you will know how to determine what your clear, inspired, intelligent actions are for your career. What's next for you? What's the best, what are the best actions to put on your next actions list that will help propel you towards your dream career, your dream life, your hell yes team, your hell yes salary, your hell yes impact, all of that. We want that for you. So let's take a step back first. What do I mean by the paradox of action? Quite simply, what I mean is that when there's an action we're considering taking or when there's a goal that we have, the paradox of action is that we both want to and don't want to at the same time. 
We both want to and don't want to at the same time. I want to lose weight. Or at least I think I should lose weight. Or maybe that would be one of my goals. Yeah, I want it, but I don't want it. I want the goal that feels like a good goal. At least maybe it is. But I also don't want, I don't want to do the things. I don't want to have to not eat carbs. I don't want to have to starve myself. So there's an example in, you know, the eating realm. In the career realm, I want a better job. I want a better team. I want to earn more money. I want to have more balance. But at the same time, I don't want to sacrifice my integrity, sacrifice my balance in the quest for trying to find more balance. I don't want to come off like a money-grubbing you-know-what. I want to do this with integrity. I don't want to work my ass off in order to earn a 20, 30, 40, 50% raise. I want to and I don't want to. There's also the, the level at which most of our clients are at, and this is the theme of the month for our clients, by the way. So if you're a client that's listening, think of this as a nice supplement to all of the wonderful trainings and support that we've given you so far this month. And those of you who aren't clients may be at this level as well, where who are listening, where it's no, 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 I'm, I'm clear what I want. And I know the experience I want to have. And I know how to get there, at least I'm starting to figure out how to get there. But there's still a part of me that's not sure, or that is just like, I don't want to like, like, I just kind of I lack the motivation. That's why the theme of the month is actually action beats motivation. But we got to meet ourselves where we're at and say, you know what? I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to go to the gym today. I don't want to write my resume. I don't want to reach out to 10 people and ask them if they could help me find a job. I don't want to do these things. I want to because I know, or at least there's a part of me that knows that those are the actions that are going to help me get what I want but I also don't want to because it feels too hard. And there's also the don't want to that's like, not now. I will work on my resume. I will reach out to my colleague and ask for any leads on a new job, but not now. Now's not the right time. Now's not the perfect time to do it. And then there's all these different flavors of I want. I want it because I really want it. It's my soul's desire. I want it because it's what I believe I should have. I want it, but it's kind of like a pipe dream. I want it like a, oh yeah, that would be nice. Not the, I want it like it's my soul's desire, come hither, I want you. There's so much nuance and there's so much paradox here in the quest towards taking the action. And so that's why the just do it advice often doesn't land because it doesn't acknowledge all of this, yeah, complexity, nuance, and paradox. And one of my mentors once told me, and I will share this nugget of wisdom with you because it applies in every area of our lives, including creating our dream careers. Your ability to gently, easily, Old paradox and nuance is directly related to your success and fulfillment in life. Your ability to gently and easily hold paradox and nuance is directly related to your success, success and fulfillment. In other words, the more you're able to gently hold, easily hold that, that paradox and nuance, the more successful and the more fulfilled you are going to be and feel. Because that's life. Life is messy. I don't have to convince you of that. Life is messy. And what's also true is our brain, our nervous system needs, requires structure in order to move forward or else you're not going to feel safe. You're not going to feel comfortable. You're not going to feel it's not gonna feel correct to move forward. And so while a level of discomfort is required to expand and move up to the next level, we have to balance that with comfort. 
there's nuance again right there for you. There's paradox again. We need both. We need both. So what's the structure here that I want to give you? The structure that I want to give you, I promise I'm going to build a bridge for it, but I'm going to bring the lead up front and then I'll build a bridge for it. Because for some of you, you're just like, just tell me what it is. Like, like what is the structure? Tell me how I make sense of all of this nuance and this craziness. And how do I decide what to do when this is true and that's true and this other thing is true and I don't even know where to start. Or I know what to do and why am I not doing it? Whatever it is. The, the structure, the certainty, the comfort that I'm going to give you. And I promise I'm going to build a bridge because for some of you, you're going to see it right away. In other words, others you're not. I want you to build your ability to feel and be in your body. I want you to build the ability to be in your body and feel what it's telling you. That's what I want you to do. That's the, that's the antidote to all of the chaos, to the nuance, to the paradox, to the Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want. I want, but maybe I don't want, and I don't want in all of these ways, and I want in all of these ways, and oh my God, what's next? And the way that this shows up, by the way, when you are wanting to build your career, and I share this because I want you to know that if you're feeling these things, or actually I should say when you feel these things, because if you're a technical leader who wants more out of your career and to upgrade your career, you're going to feel these things. It's correct to feel these things. It's part of the process. So the way that this shows up in career building is like, all right, I know I need to write my resume, but is it too soon to do that yet? Because I actually am not sure what job I want to go on, what job I want. And do I actually want to stay at my current position or not? Maybe I should stay and kind of figure it out whether this is actually the best place or do I want to leave? And if I do want to stay, what does that look like? Like, it, like, how do I even start having the conversations with my boss, with my boss's boss to like ask for what I want? Because I've been here for five, 10, 20 years and I've never gotten a promotion. Is it really possible? But no, you know what? Maybe I do want to leave. And if I leave, oh gosh, you know, I know I need to, to upgrade my resume, but where do I even start with that? Do I need to hire a resume coach? Possibly, but I think my resume is actually pretty good. Maybe I should share it with some of my friends. Oh, that could be a good action. Maybe I'm not sure, but maybe that's too many cooks. And is that just the blind leading the blind? And I also know I need to network because people talk about networking all the time. So, okay, that means I need to reach out to people, but what do I ask? And that feels kind of icky to say, hey, um, help me find a job. Like, what am I supposed to tell them? And actually, I don't even know what I want anyway. So aren't I just gonna come off as some loosey-goosey, not really clear on what I want, like when I'm reaching out and how are they going to be able to help me anyway? Most of my friends are not in tech or most of my friends aren't going to be able to help me. And I've already reached out to most of them anyway. And I've, I've reached out to them so many times that they're, that, um, they're going to think I'm like bothering them and pestering them. Like, Hey man, I need your help again. Like, I don't want to do that again. All right. Then I go on interviews and how am I supposed to prepare for interviews? By the way, there's so much disparate information out there about how to prepare for interviews and what do I say? And what are they going to, what are they going to ask me by the way? How do I prepare for that and negotiation? Oh, let me don't even, Oh my God, don't even get started with negotiation. I am terrible at negotiation or I'm actually really good at negotiation, but it's never really successful. Or I'm really good at negotiation, but I can never get to that point. Like if you can get me on the negotiation table, I can get a 20% raise more than that, 30%. But I can't even get to that point because everybody keeps saying no. And oh my God, how, how is this even going to work? What is my next action amidst all of this? And if any of those thoughts are going through your mind right now, I want you to know that I hear you, I see you, and it's correct. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the process, it gets dirty before it gets messy again. It gets dirty before it gets messy again. Now, you do need to get intentional though, and that's why you're listening. You do need to get intentional, otherwise the mess is going to stay and it's gonna build. That pile, virtual or not, of stuff 
that's there right now that's like, I don't even know what to do and this is chaotic, is only going to get worse if you don't get intentional about what you want and how to decide what's next and, and actually just take the action. Decision comes first, action comes after that. Sometimes it's a millisecond though. I decided I want to do it and oh, guess what? I'm already doing it. I was having a, a conversation with a client last night where I was helping her through um, writing an email. And um, in her words, she was procrastinating on it and I helped her. And we started, you know, we worked through the, the negative feelings of the procrastination where I was able to help her let that go. And then we started getting practical and tactical about what would you say? And I started making suggestions about what you might say in this email. And she's like, I'm already typing, Jen. Right. Like, it's like, I've already decided. This is awesome. I love it. My fingers are already on the keyboard. I'm already typing the response. Let's do it. And I'm going to click go. Let's do it. And before the end of that call with her, she clicked send and felt this huge <sighs> weight was lifted. Sigh of relief. The decision comes first. The action comes later. But know that that can happen within seconds of one another. You don't need to spend time mulling it over and thinking about it. I don't want to get off track here, but I wanted to throw that in because I know many of you needed to hear that. What's the anecdote? The anecdote is build the ability to be in your body and feel what it's telling you. What does that mean? What does that mean? And now, while this could go on a woo-woo spiritual route, and I'm not against that, I'm fully on the woo-woo choo-choo, and I know many of you are as well. I invite for those of you who want to do that, you can do that on your own. And if you're a client who wants to do that and wants some guidance, absolutely, we can have a conversation around it. With, for this conversation, for this particular podcast, I want to keep this grounded in the 3D. I want to keep this grounded in the practical and tactical and maybe somewhat theoretical. I want you to be able to tap into your intuition is what I'm really saying. But when people say, tap into your intuition, what is your intuition telling you? What is your heart telling you? It's like, what are you even talking about? What does that even mean? What does that even feel like? Like, I want to, I want to follow that advice. I want to be coachable, but like, I don't even know where to begin. So this is what I'm giving you. I'm giving you a place to begin. Listen to the immense intelligence that is available in your body. Because emotions reside in your body. Wisdom resides in your body. It's not in your brain. I'm going to say that again. The wisdom to determine what's next in your career does not reside in your brain. It resides in your body, in your heart space, in your soul space. So, the more that you can tap into and listen and be aware of what your body is telling you, the more you are going to be spot on in terms of determining this is what my next action is in my career. This is what I really want and this is what I really don't want. This is really what my dream is. And now is really the time or now is really not the time to get to the truth you need to learn how to get into your body. So how do you begin there? And I realize that for many of you, you're past this point, especially if, again, if you're a client who's working with us. But many of you who are listening have done this stuff that I'm about to talk about before. And I acknowledge that. For you, I encourage you to empty your cup. I encourage you to take this on like a beginner's mind, you know, access your beginner's mind here. Don't just say, oh, I've done this. I've done this a million times before. It doesn't work. Or I've done this a million times before. I already got it. I'm already an expert at the mind-body connection. What's next? I need the 201, 301 expert level. 
If there's any of that, I want you to cut that shit out. I really do. Because this process of developing your mind-body connection, feeling in your body, listening to your soul, it never ends. It's a never-ending process. In other words, there's always another layer of expertise. There's always another layer of outstanding, extraordinary that you can access. And for those of you who are just beginning, this is how you begin. So what I'm going to recommend is something that is grounded in science and is grounded in experience and that makes, it's going to be very easy for your brain to latch onto to say, oh, wow, that makes sense. I get it. It is also going to be very easy for you that if you wanted to, to take this down a spiritual route as well and like access the energy of it if you want to as well. And the entry point here is gratitude. I want you to establish a daily gratitude practice. And this may be unlike any other gratitude practice that you have ever engaged in. So raise your hand for me if you've tried a gratitude journal and it didn't work. Raise your hand for me if you've tried some kind of gratitude practice and it's like, ah, eh, kind of, but you know. Or raise your hand if you're doing the gratitude practice and you want to take it to the next level. Awesome. Raise your hand if you've never done a gratitude practice, but it sounds like something that might be good. Cool. So you're going to feel gratitude in your body. That is the outcome. That's it. It's that simple. Feel gratitude in your body and identify where in your body you feel it. That's it. Now, for some of you, you can just do that right now. You can be like, ah. yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I feel it. And that's awesome. Again, for you, I want you <clears throat> to use this as an opportunity to take this to the next level. How can I feel it even more? How can I access it even when I'm angry? How can I shift from anger to gratitude in a millisecond? There's always another level. How can I be in that feeling space of gratitude more throughout the day? And for those of you who are just getting started, here's what you do. Take three deep breaths. We're going to cut this literally is this is neuroscience behind it. It's very hard to access gratitude or any empowering feeling state, by the way, if there's any amount of, of stress or really if, if there's stress gets in the way. We can't get rid of stress. That's why I want to correct what I just said, if there's any amount of stress. But what we want to do is lower our stress levels and deep breaths does it. So three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. If you can't do in through the nose because you're stuffed up, mouth is fine. But if you could do, ideal is in through the nose, out through the mouth, longer out of your mouth than in through, the, through your nose. So you might start with something like three seconds in through your nose and six seconds out through your mouth, three times. So let's do this together. Hand on, hands on your heart, either one, both, doesn't matter. Breathe in, breathe out. And you're breathing out as if you were blowing through a small straw. Do it again, in and out. Long, extended exhale. One more. In and out. And I want you to ask yourself the question. Hmm. I wonder. What could I be grateful for? right now. 
I'm curious if I could be grateful for anything right now, what would it be? Hmm. And if you want to take this to another level, say it out loud and make that sound. Hmm. That sound of curiosity, that sound of wonder. I'm going to give you 10 seconds right now to either say that out loud or say it in your mind's eye to yourself. I wonder, what could I be grateful for? Close your eyes. I wonder, what could I be grateful for? And notice what comes up. If nothing comes up, notice that too. It's all correct. It's all your body telling you what it needs right now to feel grateful. Because you just gently gave your body direction. You didn't command it. Be grateful. That's why the gratitude journal often doesn't work. I'm grateful for my family. God damn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, your body's just going to be like, what? <laughs> right? And you're not actually going to feel it. We are gently directing our body toward what we want. And what we want is gratitude. And gratitude is one of the, oh, magical emotions that just, oh, everyone can feel it as long as we're in like a, a parasympathetic relaxed state. It's always there. It's always there. That's why the three deep breaths to start with. It's why the hands on the heart. That's why close the eyes because you're taking out any other potential st uh, stimulants or stressors. And we're wondering again, because it's not like a, I'm grateful for this, right? It's a, gee, hmm, I wonder. And so when you do that, notice what comes up. Notice what comes up and use that as your signpost, as your GPS toward what's next. Now, for some of you, you closed your eyes and you pictured your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter, your parents, your pets, your family, your house, your car, the vacation you took or about to take. And guess what? You did it. You experienced gratitude in that moment. And you didn't have to pressure or try. It just happened. Just like sleep. If we try too hard, it ain't going to happen. Like many other things in life. If you try too hard, it ain't going to happen. But if we gently open up the pathways to that which is natural anyway, it will. Whoop, there it is. If your brain was like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. This is a weird thing. Um, I've, I've never done this before. Am I doing it right? I want you to do it again. Three deep breaths, hand on the heart, close your, and then before you close your eyes, I wonder what I'm grateful for. Hmm. Close your eyes. What am I grateful for? And be in the stillness. If the mind chatter won't stop, what I'm going to suggest for you is think of this as step one. I'm going to suggest a step zero for you, which is meditation. Pick an app, headspace, calm, whatever, and meditate for one week for at least five minutes a day. Then come back and try this again. Because that's a sign, it's our body telling us that the brain is still in charge. The brain is just so overactive. It needs permission to come down and it needs an outlet for that every day. 
So your body will show you the way. That's what the whole point of this is. And so when you get to the point of, yeah, I picture my husband and my son in this beautiful house that we get to stay in and this business and clients. Oh, I'm so grateful. Take the extra step. Where am I feeling that gratitude in my body? For me, it's always in my heart space. Maybe because that's that's my um, my mind body thing. Like the, like if I want to feel gratitude in any given moment, I just put my hands on my heart. Like that's the connection that I've made. And also, you know, that's where gratitude and joy sits in our body. It's often where we feel gratitude and joy. It's right here in our heart. So ask yourself, where do I feel it in my body? And identify. Guess what? You've just strengthened the mind-body connection. You've just strengthened your ability to be in your body and feel it. You could take it even a step further if you want to. For those of you who want something slightly more advanced, what does it feel like if I were, hmm, if I were to describe this feeling of gratitude, what does it feel like? And often metaphor is very helpful here because we're, look, let's be honest. Let's, let's give our brain a break here. We're trying to describe the indescribable and yet, we are describing it and that can actually intensify the feeling and it can also help you to cultivate that feeling and turn it on whatever you want. So for me, gratitude feels like a warm hug. Gratitude feels like this tingly, running through the meadow sensation of, oh, this is so nice. And so what's your metaphor? What do you feel in your body when you feel gratitude? And then flip it around if you want to feel gratitude. Imagine a warm hug. Oh, there it is. Imagine yourself frolicking through a meadow. That's also gratitude. And also realize, and one last thing I will, I will leave you with, is that emotions often come in cocktails. It's often not just one. So gratitude is often also mixed in with some joy and some pleasure and some satisfaction as well. Yeah. The goal is not, I need to feel 100% pure gratitude. You know, it's like a, you're a chemist and it has to be a vial with just gratitude in there. No. <laughs> Again, like, I give you permission to half-ass this. Like, just feel gratitude. That's it. Feel it in your body. And then the more you can listen to what your body is telling you, the more you're going you're gonna to be able to determine what the next action is. You're just going to feel it. Your body's going to tell you. Your body's going to tell you, this is what you want, and this is how you get it, and this is who you ask for help, and this is the action, and this is when you take it, and this is perfect. The wisdom is there. It's simply been uh, caked over with muck. There's muck and mucus and blah, just on top of it, through just the years of not paying attention to it. This is true for all of us. This is true of the human experience. So don't make the muck wrong. <laughs> we gotta get dirty sometimes in order to create our dreams. So get in your body. Listen to the wisdom that your body has and recruit your brain when it's helpful and only when it's helpful. So what's your next action? Meditate every day. Feel gratitude every day. Listen for the signs. Feel what resonates and what doesn't and follow them. This is a journey. This is not a trip. 
A trip is like, we're going to do this and this and this and this and this and boom, done. Well, the brain may love that. The brain doesn't drive the bus. The heart and the soul do. This is a journey. This is where I am right now. And this is where I want to go. All right, cool. Let's feel our way through it. That's what I invite you to do. Feel your way towards your dream. And for some of you, this is really resonating. And it's resonating so much that you realize you need help because you have blind spots. Because you want to take this to the next level. Because you want to be a part of a community of people who are also doing this. And you know that your success is directly attributed attributed to the people who you surround yourself with. Maybe it's for all these reasons and others that you want help. And the best way to determine if it's a fit for us to work together is to book a call with us. To book that call, it's thepeoplestack.com slash book. Thepeoplestack.com slash B-O-O-K. Go to our calendar page, pick a time that works for you. You're going to be having a career clarity session with a member of my team. Show up coachable. It's going to be the most clarifying conversation that you've ever had. You're going to get to the truth about what's not working in your career and where you want to go. As long as you show up coachable and as long as it's fit, we're going to give you one free month of our foundational program, People Stack Momentum, because that's how devoted we are to making sure that those of you who really want help and those of you who really want to create your dream career can do it. But you got to show up for the call and you got to show up coachable. And I know that most of you are more than able to do this. And then you're going to get a free month of our, of our foundational program. And we'll also talk about other ways that we can help you as well if you want to keep working with us beyond that month. So if it's time, it's time. ThePeopleStack.com slash book. We're here to help. We are absolutely devoted to helping you create your dream. To identify what it is to know what you want and know what you don't want, and to take the action steps to give you the strategies and the systems and the supports at all levels to make sure that whatever dream you imagine up actually comes true. And remember, it's a journey, not a trip. We can't promise exactly the time frame. We can't promise exactly the steps you're going to take along the way, although we certainly have foundational strategies. And we can't promise that it's going to happen exactly the way you dreamed it. But if you show up coachable, decisive, committed, resourceful, connect it to your intuition, and we'll show you how to do that. Connect it to infinite intelligence and we'll show you how to do that connected to your body and your emotions and we'll show you how to do that as long as you keep showing up that way and all of this is fun and fulfilling and amazingly just easy at a certain level although there is a learning curve you're going to create your dream and often it's better than you imagined so for those of you who are feeling this call and want to find out if it's a fit to work together, the link, once again, to book with us, to book, to book a career, career strategy session with us is thepeoplestack.com slash book. Action is messy. Action is complicated. Action is nuanced. Action is full of paradox. You want to, you don't want to, and in lots of different ways. And the way to feel safe and secure and comfortable amidst all of this chaos is to learn, cultivate the habits, and build the strength of feeling what your body is telling you. Be in your body, listen to it, and heed to that advice. Ignore your body at your peril. Listen to your body. Follow its advice, it knows. Because guess what? Your body is you. Your body is you. It's an important part of you. All right, guys. Take care. Big hugs. 
Wishing you lots of gratitude and joy and fulfillment and success and impact. Take care. Until next time.